Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk all about when you need to gel your flash. Today's video is brought to you by Adorama, which buys me the time to make these type of videos without any influence from any specific camera brands. I shop at Adorama for their great deals on a ton of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up enjoying this video and you're interested in purchasing any of the products that are discussed, please give Adorama a thank you by using the links in the description below. So about two years ago, I made a video about shooting with CTB gels in the shade and to date, it's been my most popular video and a lot of people have given me great feedback on it. But since then, I've never really updated with anything else about gels. So I wanted to make a video, uh, a series of videos that serves as a complete guide for when to gel a light, how to get creative with it, and what type of effects you can achieve using gels. Because to me, gels are probably the most underused tool in photography. They are so cheap, so small, and you can get such amazing results if you just have the knowledge to use them. So in today's video, we're going to provide an introduction into gels, into the most basic type of gels, and how to use them to achieve balance in your image. But I am gonna follow up with two additional videos on gels. The second is gonna go over tint, and color effect gels. And the third video is going to get into inverse color theory and advanced results that you can achieve using gels. But for now, let's make sure that everybody's on the same page with the basic principles of color temperature. Color temperature is the way that we define the color property of light. The lower the color temperature of light, the more yellow or warmer the color is. And the higher the color temperature of light, the cooler or more blue the light is. To remember this, I simply think of a fire. In a fire, at the dead center of it, where it is at its hottest temperature, the hottest physical temperature, is where it has the coolest color, which will normally be blue. From that blue center, it becomes white, and then yellow, orange, and often a deep shade of red on the outside. So as the physical temperature comes down, the color increases in warmth. Kelvin or K is the standardized scale that we use to measure the color temperature of light. To balance your camera with the ambient conditions means to accurately represent the color temperature as white, and therefore accurately represent all colors in the image. Cameras can do this somewhat accurately using auto white balance, based on the colors present in the image. You'll also find a lot of presets designed to adjust the Kelvin to a specific number that the camera manufacturer has deemed appropriate for that lighting condition, such as tungsten, fluorescent, daylight, and cloudy. Lastly, you should have the option to manually enter your color temperature by choosing the Kelvin value. Let's simplify a bit and focus on only three of the most common color temperatures that you're likely to find in photography, tungsten, daylight, and shade. Tungsten lighting is typically around 3200 Kelvin. Daylight from the sun is typically around 5,500 Kelvin. Shade starts at 7,000 Kelvin, but can go up much higher from that. With all three of these, there is a range depending on the lighting conditions, but these are some pretty standard numbers that we all consider to be common for those types of light. So if that is your only source of light, the ambient light, all you have to do is match your color temperature in your camera based on those lighting scenarios. So if you're in a tungsten environment like incandescent lights or candle lights, bringing your camera down to 3200 Kelvin will help you match the colors in that scene. And if you're outside in daylight, you would want your Kelvin closer to 5500. But once you start mixing colors of light, which you're often doing with flash, that's when things get a little bit more complicated. Here are three LED lights. The left light is at 3200 Kelvin to represent tungsten lighting. The center is at 5500 Kelvin to represent daylight. The rightmost panel is at 7000 Kelvin to represent shade. All three lights will remain at these temperatures as we modify the camera's Kelvin setting. Depending on what the camera is set to, we'll alter the color of each light. With the camera set to 3200 Kelvin, we are balanced for the left LED, which looks white. You'll notice as we go right, the colors get cooler or more blue as the Kelvin temperature increases. When we set the camera to 5500 to balance with the middle LED, the 3200 Kelvin panel on the left appears warmer in color because of its lower temperature, whereas the right LED appears blue in color because it has a higher color temperature. Finally, we set the camera to 7000 Kelvin to balance with the right LED. Now, both the left and center panel are warmer colors with the left panel being the warmest. So it's really easy to modify the color temperature of a light when it's a bicolor LED that is designed to be any type of color you want. 
But what do we do when we're using a light source that is stuck at a specific color temperature, such as any strobe on the market that is designed specifically to only fire at a 5500 Kelvin temperature? This is where we get into the world of gels. Gels are thin pieces of colored plastic that we can use to modify the color of a light source. The most common use of gels in photography is to create a balance between the ambient light and the light from flash. Let's say you walk into a room with tungsten lighting. That tungsten lighting is at 3200 Kelvin as we discussed before, which means the light in the room is very warm in color. If you use a flash that is at 5500 Kelvin, then you will have a split color cast in the room. Your ambient light is at 3200 and your flashlight is at 5500 Kelvin. So no matter what you set your camera to, your colors are not going to be balanced. If you set your camera to 5500 Kelvin to match with your flash, which is probably what it would choose in auto white balance if it detected a flash, then anything lit by your flash will appear normal and proper color. But your ambient light in the background will appear excessively warm. And if instead you set your camera to 3200 Kelvin, then your background is going to be properly balanced, but anything lit by your flash will appear very cool in color. In this situation, and in simple terms, you have to make your flash warmer so that it balances with the warm light of the room. This is where you would need to gel your flash with a color temperature orange gel, or CTO for short. This gel will color your light more orange, so it will take that daylight color temperature of 5500 and bring it down to 3200 Kelvin, which will balance with the ambient light in the room. Now that both of your light sources are the same color temperature, once you set your camera to 3200 Kelvin, all of the colors in the room will be accurately represented. The same can be applied to photographing in the shade. Since shade is a cooler color or more blue color than daylight is, you have to put blue on your flash in order to make them match. The gel for that would be color temperature blue or CTB for short. Now, shade can be tricky because shade does go anywhere from 6,500 to 10,000, possibly even more, depending on how deep of shade you are in and the conditions of the environment around you. Thankfully, there exist levels of gels in between full CTO and full CTB. These are typically represented by quarter or half variants, and you can also find tenth increments as well. Don't worry about those yet. And this isn't a mystery, a lot of gel manufacturers will either print the color temperature modification directly on the gel or include it on a separate piece of paper as a guide. There are a few ways to identify the gel necessary to balance with the room. First, you can simply change the color temperature until you like how the ambient looks. You can do this with test shots or in the case of live view and mirrorless cameras, simply watch the display as you modify the Kelvin temperature. Second, you can use a custom white balance option, which allows you to photograph something neutral in color, such as a gray card, expo disc, or napkin. And then the camera will choose the proper Kelvin setting to balance with the ambient light. Afterwards, it will show you the values and you can choose the appropriate gel from there. Third, if you're feeling really passionate about color, you can invest in a colorometer, which is designed to capture the color information in an environment. But to be honest, I don't know a single photographer who is using one of these for image capture. If somebody happens to own one, it's normally for testing information on lighting products. Whichever method you use to arrive at determining the proper color temperature of a room, once you have that number, then you can use the printed information on a gel or the gel guide to determine the gel that is appropriate to put on your flash to balance all the colors in your image. As far as gel options go, if you're just looking for a basic kit to put on top of speed lights, then I recommend the Rogue Lighting Filters. I definitely wouldn't cheap out here and get some type of imitation because those imitations often have really bad color casts and the whole point of this is to get color right. So there's no reason to invest in something that's not gonna do that. The Rogue lighting filters are great for speed lights. They come in a pouch, they include guides on all the colors as well as some tips and they have these little bands that you can attach them to your speed light with. Now, if you're looking to have something that is a little bit more polished and faster and you're already getting light shapers for your speed lights, then I would consider the MagMod set of gels. They have color temperature gel kits and they are really quick to change out and use different colors. So this is great for an event photographer who's working in a fast paced environment. Now, once you get away from speed lights and you start working with strobes with different shaped heads and bulbs, then it can get a little bit more difficult. So it's best to look for a proprietary solution. So if you have a Pro Photo light, check out Pro Photo System of Gels. 
Now you guys know I use Godox 8200s, both the bare bulbs and the new round heads, as well as 8400 Pro and 8600 Pro, but none of those are a standard shape of head and Godox doesn't offer a proprietary solution. So for me, I use gels from flashgels.com, which are precision cut gels that are designed to work with all the different Godox lights. They have them for the 8200 round head, they have them for the 600 and 400 Pro, and they have them for older lights like the original 8600 or 8360. I've got links to all of these systems of gels in the description below. One thing, make sure you are never putting a gel directly on a flash tube. If you have an exposed flash tube, like a Palsy Buff Light, do not try to put a gel directly over that. I hope this video was a great introduction into gels and balancing color temperature with flash photography and ambient lighting. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. I will be following up very soon with two additional videos on gelling. The second is going to be going over tint, dealing with fluorescent lighting and color effect gels, which are completely different from color correction gels. The third and final video will be more advanced. We're gonna go over inverse color theory, basically applying color temperatures to different lights so that you can really take control and do some wild things with your images. So subscribe if you'd like to check those out. Until next time, Keep on shooting.